everyone. My name is Jamon McKinney, or you can just call me Juice because that is my nickname. I want to discuss the Philadelphia Eagles right about now and how they will fare during the 2020-21 NFL season. Let's get right to it. So, I think Philadelphia is actually a playoff team once again. I really do. You know, I think they have the best quarterback and head coach duo in this division. In fact, I don't think that. I know that. Okay, I'm sorry, Dallas fans. Dak Prescott is not better than Carson Wentz. I'm sorry, Mike McCarthy. He's not a better head coach than Doug Peterson. One guy, Mike McCarthy, underachieved with Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion, and Doug Peterson... In his second season as an NFL head coach, won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles as his starting quarterback, who was actually the backup that year. I, I know that Nick Foles deserves our respect, but Nick Foles last year couldn't even beat out Gardner Minshew in Jacksonville. Let that sink in, people. So, usually when you have the best quarterback and head coach duo in your division, you're usually going to win that division. You know, you look at the Packers last year. They had the best head coach and quarterback duo. They won the division. The Saints, same thing with them. The Patriots, same thing with them. The Ravens, same thing with them. So honestly, I think Philadelphia should be the best bet to win this division once again. So I'm going to kind of dive into their record a little bit later on in this episode. We'll talk about the players, the defense, the offense, etc., etc. But yeah, as of right now, I got to say, I think Philadelphia is going to win this division once again. And a big reason is because of Carson Wentz, who to me is just outside that elite quarterback tier. I think that Carson Wentz is right there. Carson Wentz is one of the five most talented quarterbacks in the entire NFL, arguably. You know, he's right up there with Watson. He's right up there with Lamar Jackson. He's right up there with, you know, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, etc., etc. He's one of the most talented quarterbacks in all of football. You could definitely make the argument he's one of the top five most talented quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, Carson Wentz in 2017 had an MVP season before he got hurt. 2018, he sort of had a down year. But this past year, Carson Wentz earned some stripes from me. He earned a little bit more respect from me because Carson Wentz became the first quarterback in NFL history to throw for 4,000 yards with no wide receiver accumulating 500 yards receiving. Let that sink in, people. Carson Wentz was turning water into wine last year at the wide receiver position. And that's why I expect great quarterbacks to do. Put the team on their back. That's why Carson Wentz got that big-time contract. Because at some point, he was going to be asked to lead this franchise from evil. And he did that last year. You know, the Philadelphia Eagles... Had a ton of injuries at wide receiver. Deshaun Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey, all were pretty much injured mostly throughout the entire season. You know, J.J. Arcega Whiteside did not pan out, you know, as a rookie. He, he, he really struggled last year. Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz were banged up from time to time last year. The Philadelphia Eagles had so many injuries last year that at one point, Greg Ward, Greg Ward, no disrespect to that guy. He's in the NFL, respect him. But Greg Ward, at times at the end of the year, was their best wide receiver. But it did not matter because Carson Wentz is that guy. Carson Wentz last year threw more touchdown passes than Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, and Deshaun Watson. When you take into account the totality of their weapons as a whole, all four of those quarterbacks had better weapons than Carson Wentz. Now, going forward, I want to see Carson Wentz you know, have some playoff success. Because that's kind of what Carson Wentz at this point in his career is going to be judged upon, you know, if he can win the Philadelphia Eagles a Super Bowl. Because most NFL fans, they saw what he did in 2017. They saw what he did last year. So we all know Carson Wentz has one of the best arms in the NFL. We know that he, you know, can make all the throws. We know that he can make plays off schedule. We know that he can win this division. Now it's all about leading the Eagles to a Super Bowl because Let's be real, people. Carson Wentz, he was great in 2017, but Nick Foles won the Eagles that Super Bowl. Not Carson Wentz. He deserves some credit for getting them, you know, mostly home field advantage because he did the dirty work, you know, the first 13 games of the season. But Carson Wentz has to prove he's that guy in the playoffs. The only other thing I will say about Carson Wentz is that he needs to stay healthy. 
Yo, his rookie season, he was kind of banged up towards the end of the year in 2017. He had a season-ending injury in 2018. He had a season-ending injury, and he finally gets to play in a playoff game this past year, and he gets injured versus the Seattle Seahawks due to a Jadavian Clowney cheap shot. And wow, that is not Carson Wentz's fault. It just seems like Carson Wentz just finds a way to get injured. He needs to do a better job of protecting his body, sliding down, you know, avoiding pressure, you know, and things of that nature. He just needs to play a little less reckless. And I do think that Carson Wentz, if he does those things, he will potentially be able to stay healthy. But I like Carson Wentz a lot. Now, when evaluating this offense, I look at a guy like Miles Sanders, very good running back that had a very solid rookie season. Boston Scott got some got some meaningful snaps last year, do some injuries. Corey Clement is not a bad player. And at wide receiver, that's the big question. Is Carson Wentz's weapons going to be better this year? I believe so, because not only did the Philadelphia Eagles draft Jalen Rager and John Hightower, who were two players that I, I liked in the draft. You know, I felt that the Philadelphia Eagles should have probably taken Denzel Mims or Justin Jefferson or even maybe a T. Higgins over a guy like Jalen Rager, you know, who I think is good. But I think his max ceiling is a very good number two option. I don't ever see Jalen Rager being a number one. But I think what Howie Roseman and the Philadelphia Eagles want to target in the draft was speed, 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 speed. Last year, the Philadelphia Eagles, due to their injuries, had one of the slowest wide receiver cores in the NFL. So Jalen Rager... He provides speed, juice, and burst. So he's a good he's a good fit for their offense. John Hightower is a decent pickup. Obviously, Deshaun Jackson is going to hopefully maybe stay healthy this year. If you get a healthy Deshaun Jackson, that's one of the best deep threats in the entire NFL. We saw what he did versus, versus Washington in week number one when he was healthy and Carson Wentz was hitting him in stride down the field. It was, it was magical to watch. We know what Alshon Jeffrey brings to the table when he's healthy, despite sort of declining over the past couple years, you know, really struggling to stay healthy. I still think Alshon Jeffrey, when on the field, is still a well above average wide receiver. Our Sega wide side definitely disappointed last season, but maybe he takes a step this year. We shall see. You've got good tight ends in Dallas Goddard and um, Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz obviously being the tight end one, Dallas Goddard being tight end number two. The offensive line is solid as well. Now, Brandon Brooks, that's a guy that was a very key component to that Philadelphia Eagles offensive line. He's out for the season. So that is a huge blow to the Eagles offense, but you still got Lane Johnson. You got Andre Dillard, a very young offensive lineman that I feel good about. You got Jason Kelsey at, at center. So this offensive line is still very good, just not as good as it as it would have been with Brandon Brooks healthy at the guard position. Now, Eagles fans crushed the Jalen Hurts pick. And I am going to defend the Jalen Hurts pick one more time for you Eagles fans. I'm sorry, Eagles fans. I don't understand why you guys are upset with this pick. I really don't. I don't. I don't get it. Okay, listen. Is Jalen Hurts going to replace Carson Wentz? No, he's not. And for all you dumb buffoons out there that say, Oh, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles don't believe in Carson Wentz. They drafted Jalen Hurts to replace Carson Wentz. For the love of God, please stop sounding stupid. And please stop saying that. Carson Wentz is one of the 10 best quarterbacks in the NFL. They're not trying to replace Carson Wentz. What they're trying to do is, is secure that backup quarterback role because we saw a couple years ago in 2017 when Carson Wentz got injured when they had a very good viable backup quarterback in Nick Foles. Guess what? The team did not drop off significantly and they were still able to win a Super Bowl. The fact that the Philadelphia Eagles had a quality backup quarterback saved their season and allowed them to win their first ever Super Bowl. And Philadelphia Eagles fans are complaining saying, well, we took Jalen Hurts too early. Stop saying that, please. Stop saying that. Listen, okay? If you have a quarterback that you like, you cannot wait to pick the quarterback, okay? It doesn't matter. If you like the guy, wherever you pick him, if he pans out, it's a successful pick. Look at the New York Giants last year. A lot of people felt that Daniel Jones would be available after pick number six. And there were some reports that the Denver Broncos, that the Miami Dolphins, that the Washington Redskins, at the moment when they were called the Washington Redskins, they wanted to potentially maybe look to select Daniel Jones if he was there. So you can't take a risk on that player. And listen, if Jalen Hurts comes in and saves the Philadelphia Eagles season and they win a Super Bowl because they have stability 
at the back of quarterback position, that is more than worth a second round pick, okay? If you can win a Super Bowl with your backup quarterback contributing, that is worth a second round pick. You don't get second round picks that help you win Super Bowls that often, okay? So I'm done talking about Jalen Hurts. He is going to provide a good dynamic actually to the offense as well because I think the Philadelphia Eagles are actually going to use Jalen Hurts in the Taysom Hill role. I think he could be Taysom Hill plus for this team. He's a better thrower than Taysom Hill. And honestly, he might be just as good, if not a better athlete than Taysom Hill. So I think that when the Philadelphia Eagles get in the red zone, they're going to have Miles Sanders on the field, along with Jalen Rager and Deshaun Jackson and Jalen Hurts. That's some serious speed on the field. You can run some two quarterback sets with Jalen Hurts. You can run some RPOs. You know, you can do some Philly specials with Jalen Hurts. So I think the Philadelphia Eagles... Hit it out the ballpark by selecting Jalen Hurts. That was a great pick. And for all you Philadelphia Eagles fanboys and things of that nature that hate the pick, I can't help you. I can't help you, okay? Let's talk about, um, let's see here. The defense. The defense. Um, the defense should be a, an above average unit once again. Jim Schwartz is a very underrated defensive coordinator. And this year, the secondary should be better. Because now the Philadelphia Eagles have a legit number one quarterback. His name is Darius Slay. And Darius Slay is definitely going to add to that secondary. Obviously, you, you guys also bring in the Kel Ropey Coleman, a very underrated, versatile defensive back that can play in the slot, that can play on the outside. He's very, very good. Now, is the secondary all the way there? Is it all the way fixed? No, it's not. But the good thing is, the Philadelphia Eagles actually have a pass rush. And if you have a great pass rush, your secondary does not... It doesn't need to be immaculate if you have a great pass rush. Obviously, Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox are excellent. Vernon Hargraves along with Derek Barnett. It's a very um good defensive front, you know. Are the middle linebackers a question? Absolutely, but they're not awful. I would consider the Philadelphia Eagles middle linebacker core average to slightly below average. That's just my opinion, though. Now, a big loss for this team was Malcolm Jenkins. Okay, he's a big time loss, no doubt. But now you bring in a guy like Clavon Wallace out of Clemson, who you drafted in the mid round of the 2020 NFL draft. I think that he can come in and contribute and be the successor to Malcolm Jenkins. I like Clavon Wallace a lot. So that's how I feel about the Philadelphia Eagles defense. How will this Eagles team overall fare this year? 10 and 6 football team. 10 and 6 football team. Um,. Philadelphia is going to win gonna win 10 games, in my opinion. And I actually think that's good enough to win this division because I don't think Dallas is all that great. I don't understand the hype behind the Dallas Cowboys. I really don't. Now, I was leaning towards 11-5 for Philadelphia, but mainly due to the schedule, I had to knock the Philadelphia Eagles down a notch. So, you know, are the Philadelphia Eagles great at quarterback and linebacker? No, they're not. That's a question. The Brandon Brooks injury is a question as well. And listen... We don't know for sure if this wide receiver core is going to stay healthy or if they're going to be great this year. So that is a little bit of a question mark. I do definitely think this team is going to be better just simply because the Philadelphia Eagles could have not gotten as unlucky as they did last year. It's, it was very hard to project the Philadelphia Eagles dealing with as many injuries as they dealt with last year. And they still found a way to make it into the playoffs and win the division over Dallas, who actually was a more talented football team than them last year. So if Philadelphia stays somewhat relatively healthy, this team is going to win 10, 11, and maybe 12 games if things break their way. Now, this team over the last couple of years has shown they have sort of been hit with the injury bug more times than not, but I think Philadelphia has a very good offensive line, a very good head coach and quarterback duo. The running back core is solid. The wide receiver core, when healthy, is actually very well above average. The tight end group is very good, and the defense should be very good as well and be able to get after the quarterback. The Philadelphia Eagles will be able to create turnovers. They will be able to get pressure on quarterbacks, and yeah, this Philadelphia Eagles team, to me, is a Super Bowl contending team that will win 10 games this year. Now, let's go over the schedule. I'm not officially picking these games. I'm not telling you who Philadelphia is going to beat and who they're going to lose to. I'm just going to tell you who I would favor in each matchup. That's what I've been doing for these schedules, and that's not changing today. Okay, so at Washington, week number one, I'd actually th I actually think Washington can win that game. I think Washington has a real shot to beat Philadelphia. They will be able to get after Carson Wentz with that very good defensive line. Dwayne Haskins had a very good game versus the Philadelphia Eagles last year. You know, he actually won Rookie of the Week after that Philadelphia Eagles game. So, I think Haskins in the offense will be improved this year. 
and the defense has a chance to be very, very good. I think this, I think they're going to be a top 10 defense this year. So, look, Washington last year barely lost to Philadelphia both times. So I say Washington can split with Philadelphia this year, but you can you can convince me that Philadelphia gets the sweep, maybe. Rams and Bengals back-to-back -back weeks, those are two straight wins. Those are two teams you're just probably better than. So if I were to project, I favor Philadelphia at San Fran, at Steelers, and Baltimore. That's a tough stretch. But I think Philadelphia will find a way to win at least one of those games. Best case scenario, you win two of those games. You're not sweeping that three-game stretch. At San Fran, at Pittsburgh, and at Baltimore, that's as tough of a stretch as it gets. But I trust Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson to at least win one of those matchups, okay? Now, Week 7 versus the New York Football Giants. I favor Philadelphia. I don't think that New York is anywhere close to Philadelphia's level as far as talent goes, as far as coaching staff goes. You know, Philadelphia is just better. I favor Philadelphia. Dallas, I think you're going to split with Dallas this year, whether you win at home or on the road. That remains to be seen. Both teams are pretty evenly matched. I do think Philadelphia is the better team, but I think that Philadelphia will split with Dallas. We'll see which game they win. We'll see which game Philadelphia loses, but you'll at least beat Dallas once this year. By week, I think you're going to actually probably sweep the Giants this year. I favored the Eagles over the Giants. I favored the Eagles over Cleveland. I think Cleveland's very talented, but I just think that when it comes to coaching, the Philadelphia Eagles have them in that area and as well as quarterback. And I think that Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz will work their magic versus Baker Mayfield and Kevin Stefanski, who is a rookie head coach, even though it's on the road. Now, Seattle, I think Philadelphia is actually due to beat Seattle. Seattle has owned Philadelphia the last couple of matchups. They obviously beat them in the playoffs last year, and they beat them in the regular season. I think Russell Wilson's magic versus Philadelphia finally probably comes to an end. I will favor Philadelphia in that matchup, even though I do think Seattle is the better team. At Green Bay, that's a tough game. You know, Philadelphia did win at Green Bay last year, but I think Green Bay is actually a better team than Philadelphia. Very good secondary that Green Bay has. Very good pass rush. Aaron Rodgers will be able to, you know, um, exploit that secondary. Devontae Adams is great. I don't think Darius Slay is a guy that can keep up with Devontae Adams 24-7. So, I favor Green Bay to win that game, probably. New Orleans, that's a toss-up game. I don't know who's going to win that game. I maybe favor Philadelphia just because they're home, but... I'm not so sure. At Arizona, toss-up game once again. I would favor Philadelphia just because I think that they can make Kyler Murray uncomfortable. And I don't trust the Cardinals' defense to make Carson Wentz uncomfortable. So that's how I feel about that game. At Dallas, that game might honestly be deciding who wins the division at the end of the year. And I could see a scenario where Dallas beats Philadelphia early in the season because Dallas usually is very good early in the season. But late in the year, I can see Dak Bortles, a.k.a. Dak Prescott, and the Cowboys choking late in the year. I think Philadelphia probably wins that game. I'd say that if I were to guess which game Dallas beats Philadelphia in, it would actually be the Week 8 matchup. But they probably could lose the Week 16 matchup. Then I think that Philadelphia comes home to beat Washington. I think that that will be a game that they will actually need to have. I think the Philadelphia will respond and beat Washington, even though Washington will probably get them in week number one, and Philadelphia will probably hold that L at that moment. But either way, Philadelphia, very good football team, good offensive line, very good quarterback, very good head coach, very good defense, very well-rounded team. And if they stay healthy, they are definitely a Super Bowl contending team. So 10 to 11 games for Philadelphia this year is what I'm kind of getting a feeling for. I'm leaning towards 10 because the schedule is very hard. But either way, I slice it. I think Philadelphia is going to go 10 and 6 during the 2020-21 NFL season. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. And I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters 
and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.